Hello again and welcome back to this series introducing VertX programming for reactive development on top of the Java Virtual Machine. In our last session we talked a little bit about some of the nice facilities that VertX gives us around handling web applications. Um, one thing you might have thought about during the initial sessions of this is what if I need to use a traditional blocking library in VertX? I've, I've mentioned several times that Vertex runs everything asynchronously using handlers and callbacks, and you never want to block the event bus. But what if I have a piece of code or a library or something that I need to call that is blocking? How do I do that in Vertex? Well, Vertex actually makes it pretty easy. There is a facility in Vertex for running blocking code. So we can say vertex.execute blocking. And it takes two parameters. The first is a lambda or method reference that does the blocking code. So it takes a promise. And inside of that lambda, we would run the blocking code. And then at some point in that lambda, we would resolve the promise either successfully or unsuccessfully. And when that promise resolves, it would hand, uh, be handled by a result handler, which is the second parameter. So we would get a result and we could put that into a lambda. Now, let's use a real world example. Uh, if you're building an application, you probably want to use some sort of database schema migration tool. So let's, in this session, let's talk about using FlywayDB to do automatic schema management. You'll see over here, I've already created a couple of SQL files that Flyway can use to apply my database schema. Uh, I've also created a Docker Compose file here that uh, will let you start up a Postgres server. Uh, this is what we'll use, and you'll see that we set up the Postgres username, password, the name of the database. We're also setting an admin password because part of my migration requires admin privileges to enable an extension inside of Postgres. So we can start up Postgres, Docker Compose up. This will be in the source repository that'll be linked in the description below. So you won't have to recreate this. Um, you may have to, if you're not a Red Hat subscriber, you won't have access to this image but you should be able to use just about any standard Postgres Docker image that you can find on the internet. I uh, highly recommend you go to uh, quay.io, Q-U-A-Y.io, and search there. Um, so to get started, we would add the FlywayDB dependencies. And so we'd go into our Maven palm file, add a dependency, uh, add a group ID org flyway db and artifact ID flyway core and then a version 631 and then we also need a JDBC driver because flyway only works with JDBC so we would say group ID org postgres and artifact ID, PostgreSQL, and version 42.2.11. So we've added FlywayDB, we've added our PostgreSQL JDBC driver. How would we implement that here in Vertex? Well, we would say Flyway, Flyway equals Flyway dot configure dot data source and the data source is just a JDBC Postgres ah. and it's look the loopback address on port 5432 and the name of the database is to do's you can actually see that in the docker compose file up oh, it's actually to do glad I double checked uh, the username, we're going to use the admin username, as I explained earlier, that's Postgres. And the password is introduction, uh, except I can't spell. It's a regular issue for me. Uh, and then 
this is sort of a builder pattern class, so we just need to say load at the end. And then all we do is call flyway. Uh, actually, we need to do a try catch block, so we say flyway dot uh, why is that not working that's weird uh, the method should just be flyway dot migrate oh, migrate don't know why that wasn't auto-completing. And if that doesn't throw an exception, then this promise that we passed in to the Lambda should be resolved successfully. Promise.complete. That's done. Uh, and if it fails, it's going to throw a flyway exception. And in that case, we want to say promise dot fail, and we'll pass that exception through. Down here in our result handler, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if it succeeded successfully. So we can say if result dot succeeded, then uh, we can say start dot complete uh, and where did start come from well when we start up a vertex vertical it can take as a parameter this promise that is a start promise and what we want to do is we want to fail that promise if there's an error and complete it if there isn't but since we've got more stuff down here where we handle that start promise, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to invert this. I'm going to say if result dot failed and say start dot fail. And I'm going to pass along the cause of that failure. There you go. So we'll only do something if the migration failed and if the migration failed we will fail the promise for the startup of this vertical which will tell vertex hey I wasn't able to successfully deploy this vertical as I've mentioned before I'm not a huge fan of, of inline lambdas I feel like they're they're messy they're difficult to test and so let's break this out into individual methods real quick so you can see what that looks like so down here, I'm going to create a new method called void do database migrations. And it's going to accept a promise of type void. And we can just paste that code into there. Uh, at which point, we can delete this lambda and replace it with a method reference. Easy peasy. Now the result handler is a little different so the result handler we actually have to do uh, a little differently we actually have to create a curried method again we talked about that once before the way we're going to do it here is we're going to say handler async result void uh, db migration result handler equals result and it's going to be this dot handle uh, migration uh, migration result and it's going to accept the start promise and the result now the reason we have to create this uh, curried method is because handler by default only accepts one parameter and we wanted to pass two so we curry in the start promise so that when we call this handler it only accepts one parameter and we can just place that db migration handler right there but we need to implement handle migration results so let's go down here again void handle migration result 
and it takes an async result of type void. And in this, we say if result.failed. Oh, and it also takes that promise that we mentioned earlier. Promise of type void is the start promise and async result. So if that uh, blocking operation failed, we would then say start.fail and pass along the cause of that failure. Boom. Done. Uh, let's start up the database using our Docker Compose. And then let's actually run our code. Clean compile, vertex run. And here in a moment, you'll see there goes our database migration happening. And because we used execute blocking to move that work off of the event loop, we don't see any errors from Vertex telling us that we blocked the event loop. So that's how you can use traditional blocking libraries inside of a Vertex vertical without blocking the event loop. Hope that helps you in your endeavors to become more familiar with Vertex and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you during the next video of this series. Thank you.